Hello, dear sewistas. Today, I would like to sew this loose, swinging skirt with you. Depending on the fabric you choose, you can sew it for the summer, or by using heavier fabrics, make it fit for other seasons, for example, fall or winter. The skirt sits comfortably on the hip and is split into two parts so that you can wonderfully combine fabrics with different patterns. For example, one here for the yoke waistband and another here for the bell-shaped swinging skirt. It's closed with a zipper which can be placed here at the side seam. It has a facing on the inside so that we have a shaped waistband. So, this would now be the version with a continuous skirt and a zipper in the side seam or a seam zipper. But today, we want to sew a different version together, which is this one here with a nicely curved skirt and a hem we will later edge with some bias binding. We will also be sewing an easier version of the zipper here in the back middle, a normal zipper covered on both sides. You can find my pattern PDF for both versions under this link. It includes all the pattern pieces to print yourself, information on the necessary fabric amount, a size chart, as well as further tips for sewing. In order to figure out the correct skirt size for you, measure your hip circumference in front of a mirror at the height at which the skirt should later sit. Using this measurement, you now check the size chart and select the corresponding size. Like with every clothing piece you make for yourself, I recommend sewing a practice piece. Out of fabric you no longer need, but that is similar to the material you are going to use in the final project. This way, you can check whether you like the width and the length. In order to do so, sew together the most important pattern pieces with the largest stitch length. You won't need the zipper. That part you can just pin together while you're trying it on. For our light, summery skirt, we need the right pattern pieces, two different fabrics, one for the skirt and one for the yoke and the waistband, interfacing for the cuff, bias binding for the hem, a normal zipper, as well as an edge stitch foot and see-through tape. The edge joining foot, or also the zipper foot, can look like this, or also like this. To cut the fabric, we will need the following pattern pieces. For the back part of the skirt, we will need this skirt piece, the yoke, and the facing, which will each need to be cut two times. For the front part of the skirt, we also need a skirt piece, the yoke, and the frontal facing. The skirt piece thus will be cut twice, the yoke and the facing in the fold line, however. The yoke and the facing pieces I have already prepared and cut here, and also the interfacing, which I have cut to the size of the facing here and ironed it on. The interfacing on the inner facing strip serves to ensure that the skirt waistband is later nice and sturdy and doesn't get stretched out. The best thing would be to first take a remnant piece from your fabric, iron on some interfacing, and then try to see if the fabric is sturdy enough, however, not stiff as a board. The pieces for the skirt should be cut diagonally to the straight grain to ensure that the skirt falls nicely, and this I would like to show you now. In order to do so, I fold my fabric piece together diagonally. Up here is the selvage, and now I take this corner, fold it downwards, so that a 45 degree angle is created here. Now we lay the skirt's pattern pieces on so that the indicated straight grain runs parallel to the selvage. So this here is the frontal skirt piece, which, by the way, I cut here at the curved edge without any seam or hem allowance, since I will later be edging it with bias binding. And I cut the back piece of the skirt in exactly the same way, because here as well we will edge it with bias binding. Now I just pin the pattern pieces in place and cut them out.
Now we have cut all the pieces, the pattern pieces for the front of the skirt as well as the parts for the back. And now begins, as I see it, the nicest part of a sewing project, the actual sewing. But first, we will take care of a little bit of serging work. You can do these with a serger machine or with a zigzag stitch or another tidying stitch on your sewing machine. So we will serge these lower edges of the facing strip of the back as well as the front part of the skirt. Furthermore, we will serge the back edges of the yoke for the skirt's back piece and serge the edges in the middle of the skirt's back piece as well. First, we will sew the back part of the skirt. In order to do so, we sew the corresponding yoke to the skirt pieces. Sew the right yoke onto the right skirt piece and the left yoke to the left skirt piece. For this, I lay both parts right sides together and secure them with a few pins. Don't be surprised if the edge of the skirt part is curved somewhat stronger than that of the yoke. Since the lengths are exactly the same, you can just go ahead and pin them together. Now we sew together both parts with a seam allowance of 1 cm or 3 eighths of an inch, whereby we don't sew the complete seam, but leave open this little piece by 3 cm or 1 and 1 eighth of an inch at the side where we haven't serged the edge. This is important for later. The left and the right skirt piece are now complete. And now we can serge the seam allowance all the way up to the opening and iron everything upwards into the yoke. Next, we will sew the right and the left skirt pieces together at the center back, whereby the zipper will later be at this part up here. Now we will use a little trick. For this, we measure the length of our zipper, so the distance between the zipper's beginning and the zipper slider. On mine, this distance is 18 centimeters, or seven and one eighth of an inch. I subtract one centimeter, or three eighths of an inch, from that length, and measure that distance from the upper edge here, and put in a pin as a marker. This upper area, up to the marker, we will now sew with a maximum length stitch, so we can later easily unseam it again. At this marker, we now briefly seal off and then continue sewing the rest of the distance with a normal, small stitch. And now, I pin both these parts together. In doing so, both these seams should meet. For the upper area, I also set my stitch to maximum length, which is 6 on my sewing machine. The seam allowance is 1.5 cm or 5 eighths of an inch, and this time I won't seal the seam beginning. When I have reached my marking here, I sealed the seam, first setting the machine to a smaller stitch length.
with which I will also continue to sew. So, done! Now we only have to iron apart the seam allowance. So, and now we've come to the exciting part. Now we will sew on our zipper and with our little trick, this will be really easy. In order to do this, we lay the zipper with the right side centrally on the seam allowance in a way that its upper edge finishes here and the zipper teeth lie right on the middle of the seam allowance. And this is where the tape comes into play. We secure the zipper here provisionally with three strips, whereby the upper strip should be stuck on at least five centimeters or two inches from the upper edge. So, and now we will sew on the zipper with the edge stitch foot from the right side. In order to do so, I turn my piece around. I will once again use a pin to mark the spot at which I previously sealed the seam according to the zipper length. That was a distance of 17 centimeters, or six and three quarter inches for me. And this is exactly the spot where I will now begin sewing my first seam. So in the left side, from the bottom to the top. Here, I have inserted an edge stitch foot left from the needle. Now, I position the skirt piece with the needle as indication under the presser foot, and sew the first seam with a distance of five millimeters, or one quarter of an inch, to the center back. I will seal the beginning. Just before I reach the slider, I stop the machine with the needle in the fabric and lift up the presser foot and pull the slider back a little bit behind the foot. Then I just make sure everything is adjusted and properly in place. Lower the presser foot again and finish sewing the rest of the seam. So, this is what the finished seam looks like now. On the back side, I just pull the slider a little bit upwards again. And now we sew from the other side. Just before that, however, sew this little bit here crosswise to the seam and then again from the bottom upwards. Just before that, I set the edge stitch foot on the other side of the needle. And now I start here at the seam beginning and seal it with one or two stitches. Now I turn my skirt and sew this length to the top with a distance of five millimeters or one quarter of an inch to the middle seam here.
Once again, we stop the machine just before the slider. Lift the sewing foot while the needle stays in the fabric, and now we unstitch, preferably with an unstitcher, the middle seam. So far, that we can easily pull the slider back behind the sewing foot. Now, I finish sewing the final stretch. Now the zipper is finished. This is what it looks like on the right and like this on the wrong side. Now we just have to remove the tape strips and unstitch the big stitches we did on the right side, the guiding seam, very carefully with an unstitcher. This was now one of the different ways how you can sew in a zipper covered on both sides. If you have never done this before, I would recommend, as always, to sew a practice piece. And surely it is also very helpful if you secure it with pins here and there. And now we continue with the skirt piece. Namely, we now sew the two frontal skirt pieces to the back skirt. In order to do so, I lay them right sides together at the side seam and pin everything in place. Now you also know why we left this little bit open at the top here. This side seam on the skirt piece I now sew with a seam allowance of 1.5 cm or 5 eighths of an inch. In the same way, I then sew the second frontal part to the other side and subsequently I serge both seam allowances and iron them into the back skirt piece. We have sewn the skirt together like this, so we can now sew this long hem seam here in one bit. Either you can fold over the edge and quilt stitch it, or like me, you can edge it with some bias binding. In order to do so, you either fold the bias binding around your hem edge, secure it with a few pins, and finish it with a quilt stitch. or you go the safe way with the second option, which is slightly more effort, but I will show it to you now. To begin with, we fold apart the bias binding and then lay it with this edge here onto the wrong fabric side at this hem, and secure it with a few pins once around. Now everything is pinned in place, I can sew the first seam on the wrong side. Now I sew on the bias binding in this fold line with a distance of 1 cm or 3 eighths of an inch to this edge.
Now the bias binding is secured on the wrong fabric side. Next, we can sew the second seam and in order to do so, we fold it onto the right side and quilt stitch it. To do so, we fold this crease over to the right side exactly up to the seam, so that this seam here, the one we made previously, is covered and then secure everything with a few pins. I now quilt stitch the bias binding 2 mm or 1 8 of an inch next to this edge here. Make sure that you always keep the first seam nicely covered with the bias binding. With this safer sewing option, the curves will also be nice and clean and the inside sides are quilt stitched evenly. In the next step, the frontal yoke will be sewn together here at the side seams. The pieces lie right sides together and I will place a few pins for myself. Just like with the other skirt parts, I sew here with a seam allowance of 1.5 cm or 5 8 of an inch as well. Likewise on the other side. These two seam allowances will be surged and subsequently ironed into the back part. And now we have almost reached the finish line. Next, we just have to sew the two front skirt pieces to the frontal yoke. To do so, I have here turned the skirt to the right side so you can envision this somewhat better. Later, the left skirt piece should lie here, under the right skirt part. Therefore, this here must be sewn onto the yoke first. To do so, I lay both pieces right sides together. We will then use the next seam to also close this little opening on the skirt's back. And of course, the side seams have to meet one another precisely. There, I will place a few pins. Now I start at the end of the back yoke seam and here too, sew with a 1 cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance.
The part of the skirt that lies on top is now attached. Now we sew on the second skirt piece here at the yoke as well. Here too I will place a few pins while making sure that the side seams meet one another exactly. I now begin again at the end of the back yoke seam. Now both the frontal skirt pieces have been sewn and we can proceed with serging the seam allowances and then ironing everything upwards into the yoke. This is what the skirt looks like now. And next we will take care of the facing. In doing so, the two back facing strips will be sewn onto the frontal facing strip. Here too, with respectively 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. The facing strip is now sewn together and I have ironed apart the seams. I have turned the skirt so the right side is now on the outside. Now we pin the strip in place right sides together at the skirt's upper edge. I begin here in the back at the zipper. Take the end of the facing and fold it over to the back by 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Then I secure the strip once around with pins while making sure that the side seams are meeting up nicely. At the other end, I also fold the facing strip over by 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Now, I can sew the facing once around with a seam allowance of 1 centimeter or 3 eighths of an inch. When you've reached the end, make sure that the beginning and the end of the seam are on the same height. So, this is what it should look like now, and next we fold over the facing and iron the seam allowance upwards into the facing. I fold in the ends of the zipper slightly diagonally here. Subsequently, we quilt stitch this seam once, close to the edge, and thus simultaneously secure the seam allowance on the back side.
And now, we can fold the facing inwards and iron it so that this seam is no longer visible from the outside. So the facing doesn't fold outwards anymore, be secure here with a few hand stitches at the seam allowances, as well as at the zipper, and at the side seams. And now, our light and airy summer skirt is finally done. I am already looking forward to wearing it out in the park or strolling along the beach in it. And I hope you have had just as much fun sewing it as me. You can find more tips and tricks as well as tutorials and free patterns on my website Patty Do. Bye and see you next time.